the wind in the willows. When it began to grow dark, the rat, with an air of excitement and mystery, summoned them back into the parlour, stood each of them up alongside of his little heap, and proceeded to dress them up for the coming expedition. He was very earnest and thorough going about it, and the affair took quite a long time. First, there was a belt to go around each animal, and then a sword to be stuck into each belt, and then a cutlass on the other side to balance it. Then a pair of pistols, a policeman's truncheon, several sets of handcuffs, some bandages and sticking plaster, and a flask and a sandwich case. The badger laughed good-humouredly and said, All right, Ratty, it amuses you and it doesn't hurt me. I'm going to do all I've got to do with this here stick. But the rat only said, Please, badger, you know I shouldn't like you to blame me afterwards and say I'd forgotten anything. When all was quite ready, the badger took a dark lantern in one paw, grasped his great stick with the other, and said, Now then, follow me. Mole first, because I'm very pleased with him. Rat next, toad last. And look here, Toady, don't you chatter so much as usual, or you'll be sent back as sure as fate. The toad was so anxious not to be left out that he took up the inferior position assigned to him without a murmur, and the animals set off. The badger led them along by the river for a little way, and then suddenly swung himself over the edge into a hole in the riverbank, a little above the water. The mole and the rat followed silently, swinging themselves successfully into the hole as they had seen Badger do. But when it came to Toad's turn, of course he managed to slip and fall into the water with a loud splash and a squeal of alarm. He was hauled out by his friends, rubbed down and wrung out hastily, comforted and set on his legs. But the badger was seriously angry and told him that the very next time he made a fool of himself, he would most certainly be left behind. So at last, they were in the secret passage, and the cutting out expedition had really begun. It was cold and dark and damp and low and narrow and poor. Toad began to shiver, partly from dread of what might be before him, partly because he was wet through. The lantern was far ahead, and he could not help lagging behind a little in the darkness. Then he heard the rat call out warningly, Come on, Toad! And a terror seized him of being left behind, alone in the darkness. And he came on with such a rush that he upset the rat into the mole, and the mole into the badger. And for a moment, all was confusion. The badger thought they were being attacked from behind, and... As there was no room to use the stick or cutlass, drew a pistol and was on the point of putting a bullet into Toad. When he found out what had really happened, he was very angry indeed and said, Now this time that tiresome Toad shall be left behind. But Toad whimpered and the other two promised that they would be answerable for his good conduct. And at last Badger was pacified and the procession moved on. Only this time, the rat brought up the rear, with a firm grip on the shoulder of Toad. So they groped and shuffled along, with their ears pricked up and their paws on their pistols, till at last the badger said, We ought by now to be pretty nearly under the hall.